WKOK-TV-WKOK-TV-WKOK-TV. We welcome in Grant County historian Bill Munn, who arrives on a Monday morning with another Moments in Grant County History program. Good morning, Dr. Munn. Good morning. Good morning. I'm doctor of something or other. <laughs> well, after a while, you've been on this well, program long enough. We have the authority to I give see. you oh, you've conferred a Ph.D. You've got an honorary doctorate from Excellent. Good Morning Grant or, County. Or a not-so-honorary. I don't know. Excellent. You know, with, from this and show. I shall give my uh, accept. No, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if elected, I will not serve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you, yeah, your plaque and your check are in the mail for that, by the way, Bill. Was it? Was it? Uh, is it, was it Groucho Marx that made the, the famous statement about I refuse to belong to any club, club that would have me as a member? Right. Yeah, yeah, that's that was true. Groucho. <laughs> yes. I never heard of anything so ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> my life. Uh, okay. I figure since this is, you know, we're, we're, we're approaching Halloween, and, um, you know, I was casting about for things to, to, to bring to, to the show this morning. I was thinking about actually a hollow, well, a, an October mystery story that has been part of Marion's history for for a number of years. And I, I, I want to start first by talking about um, October of 1929 was not, was not a good month for Marion and the United States. Right. Uh, on the 24th of October in 1929, a date known as Black Thursday, which is followed by Black Friday, uh, which is today. Which, the, to, yeah, today yes. is the anniversary yes. of, of the uh, crash in 1929. Um, the, the stock market on Thursday lost 11% of its value. Oh. And uh, the newspapers, uh, it, 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 at the time, it, it, it was shocking, but it, it apparently the story hadn't uh, soaked in, um, partially because a lot of people just didn't own stock back then. It was a... It was a smaller group of people but on the 25th was actually given as the day of the actual collapse uh, and and by Wednesday of the following week the market had lost 30 percent of its value and of course this was the one of the precipitating events of the Great Depression which would uh, uh, actually in Marion's case pretty much last until World War II uh, until there was a, a, a there was some recovery, but but not a lot. But it's interesting because as you read the paper, you know you've got the lead story. I know this is Ed's Ed's territory here, but but it's it's interesting to see what was going on in the world and then what's going on in the local. Com- what, what's the lead story here? And and like I said, it the 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 stock market collapse really hadn't soaked in. It's it's the following week that people are starting to get the picture that things are in really bad shape. But the lead story, actually, in the Marion paper on the 25th was um, the story Bomb Mystery Unsolved. And a Marion resident by the name of Andrew Lagos, who was secretary of the Mold Makers Union, uh, was uh, seriously injured when a bomb was set off under his car at 501 West uh, 1st Street. Now this was the second of such incidents uh, in two weeks. On October 2nd, Charles Hume and William Dean were killed when a bomb wrecked the Labor Temple at 2nd in McClure while a meeting was in progress. Now uh, in, the, in terms of this, the, fr- the second incident, Mrs. Lagos was in the kitchen when the blast occurred. She ran to the garage and saw her husband crawl from the wreckage and collapse in the yard. And, and, and the police were called, of course, Chief Linden Moose said that the previous bombing was thought to be over some internal union politics, but others thought that this incident and the previous one was directed toward Lagos personally, that somebody may have been after him. In any event, they brought bloodhounds from Illinois and and did some investigation. Um, However, uh, the investigation was not successful. And between October 6, 1929, and February 6, 1930, a total of five men would, would die as a result of, of bombings, car bombings, and all were members of the Mold Makers Union. Now, uh, no one was ever indicted for these crimes. And uh, while there were, there were five suspects, they were all, um, the charges were dismissed against all of them. So there was no, there was no indictment. Um, now, in, in reading about this uh, in, in the state press, and it was generally held out to be a case of official ineptitude in Marion. 
Now, this this uh, has some relevance to the other events that's going to happen, the, the Marion lynching uh, in the August. The following August. The following August. Um, I have seen, and this, these are these letters are available at the Marion Public Library, a, a file of letters that were sent to the Indiana Attorney General by Marion residents uh claiming uh, that Marion had broken down into lawlessness. Now, these weren't, these weren't in reference to the lynching. These were in reference to, to the general condition of things in town. Um, a few years ago, I was given a copy of a letter that was sent to the gentleman in charge of enforcing prohibition in Marion from the U.S. The prohibition agents were employees of the Treasury Department, U.S. Treasury Department. And one agent was assigned to Marion. In the late 1940s, an officer of the Mold Makers Union sent a letter to the prohibition agent, since retired, the prohibition agency had been abolished, asking if he saw any relationship between the Labor Temple bombing and the Marion lynching. And his reply was yes, that there was, but that he did not. He reported the matter to Washington, D.C., but there were a couple of problems. One is that lynching was not a federal crime at the time and would, would, would have been exclusively the responsibility of uh, Grant County and the state of Indiana. Um, and, and secondly, uh, he was told by the agency in Washington to drop it. Uh, but he, you know, as far as any evidence, it was not mentioned in the letter. This was this was ten or fifteen years after the thing. So, the Marion Labor Temple bombing still still remain. Uh, so, are, are you assuming that the link that he saw was just simply incompetence in law enforcement? Or it implied in the letter, though, there was some sort of criminal conspiracy going on, a general oh. cr criminal conspiracy. Uh, did the w one of the issues, for example, was the last bombing that happened in November happened almost diagonally across from the from the Grant County Jail, mm -hmm. and that there 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 was the, the, the feeling, the sentiment at the time was, and in some of the letters that were sent to the Attorney General was that um, uh, implicating officials in violation of the Prohibition Act, and that this was leading to a uh, to to violence and to uh, criminality. So uh, again, a, a an unsolved an unsolved mystery. A lot of speculation, and, uh, and you know, let's face it, a lot of this is is speculation. Right. And and uh, by the way, those complaints weren't anonymous. I mean, they were signed signed complaints. But um, I don't know if there's anybody out there that has any evidence uh, regarding the Labor Temple bombings. I'm sure we'd like to we'd like to see it. On a lighter note, we asked a few weeks ago if any of our listeners had participated in the outhouse burnings in Bucktown. And so far, there's no one has stepped forward. These are, this is another Marion mystery. Uh, however, um, I w would like to hear from anybody. Uh, I'm sure they can call in and sh share their... Do you, do you think anyone is going to incriminate himself or herself? The Fifth Amendment kicks in here. Well, I would. I, it seemed to me that it was a matter of pride uh, for <laughs> folks in, in that, <laughs> that particular area of town. So, if you have, if you have either participated or witnessed, now the statute of limitations has obviously, has obviously. Well, are you are you willing to accept reports from snitches? I mean, people oh. who will just blatantly sell out their childhood friends. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Bill, he did it. it, it I was, saw him. I saw Ed Preen. It was Ed. So if you're you're, you're a, <laughs> an outhouse burner, uh, please or or a witness, please uh, uh, call in. We'd like to hear your story. Bill, real quickly, how do people access some of your moments in Grant County history and uh, other things that you have on your site? Yeah, uh, the the radio broadcasts are uh, found at all one word Grant County history at blogspot dot com on the internet and it's the audio we've got the audio for for most of our shows and also if you want to take a little more in-depth look at uh, at occurrences in marion history or interviews if you go to wiki marion 
wikimarian.org, wikimarian.org. By the way, I, it, it does pop up uh, at the top of most Google searches if you're looking at Grant County history. It's it's right at the top, and it'll take you right to the site. So, um, you know, it's, it's certainly worth spending a little time looking around. The, those, those articles were put together by some really outstanding students at, at Marion High School over a course of about, gosh, almost 14 years. And... Um, I think it's fairly unique as a as a repository of, of Grant County history. So there's a there's a couple of places to look, and uh, you know I hope people take a look and enjoy. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. the story again this morning. Moments in Grant County history from our Grant County historian Bill Munn. It's each Monday morning on WBAT. This is Alan Miller, and I want to thank you for allowing me to serve eight years as an at-large member of the Marion City Council. We've worked hard to improve Marion's quality of life by providing more jobs, more retail businesses, more restaurants, and more cultural and